5th January, about 6,282 people have died from violent incidents in this country. And 2,500 2, plus people have also been abducted. Now, let me give you, put some context into it. Now, under the Tinubu government, since President Bala Tinubu got into office, about 1,751 people have been abducted and um, more than uh, 3,000 people have been killed. Now, the, what is uh, worrisome at this point is that in the trend analysis of the security situation in the country in the past quarter, the last three months, is what has happened in Borno State Especially, also, we go into the southwest region of the country in Ogun State. What has made uh, or caused the incident in Ogun State that has given rise to fatalities in Ogun State? Let's get deep into the analysis. Tonight, I'm being joined by the executive director of Beacon Consulting Limited, one of Nigeria's security, private security company and a security expert, Mr. Kabiru Adamu. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. My pleasure. Right. So I'd I like to ask you and like to know, I, I'm really very, um, I'm itching to, to understand some of the statistics that we have before us today. And I'd like to first and foremost get to know, uh, under the Tinubu government, would you say that there have been successes in, in terms of security operations? Yes, um, in terms of military um, operations, uh, we've seen an increase in military operations, something that sustained from uh, the election period, post-election period, the tempo of military operations has been sustained. In particular, the Army and Air Force have been quite um, out there in, in terms of the number of oper operations that they've been doing. Um, now, what that meant in terms of the numbers is a plateauing of um, most of the, the figures that we've been seeing. It, it, it came down. It, well, not, not necessarily came no. down. It remained a, a, on a plateau. Yeah. So um, five, in, in the region of 500, mm. from the month of um, May, which was when the government entered, uh, it was around 500 plus. Uh, June. June, the same thing. July, August, September. So, so it was just on that On that, on that, that plateau. That plate, with yeah. a difference of there are about two, three, or, or, up to So 10. no significant successes that we can lay our hands on? No. Unfortunately. That is directly from the activities of the military. Uh, but, but, but for some of your report, it's shown that there is some kind of changes in the trend in Borno State, uh, the, the theater of uh, the insurgency in Nigeria. What have you noticed? So the most significant is the change in the dimension of the, in, the, the fatality figures. In the past, what we saw was more civilians dying. But what we are seeing recently is an inter um, a clash between the two major groups, Jamaat al Ahl al Dawati Wal Jihad and the Islamic State in West Africa province. So a significant number of the fatality figure in Borno State has been coming from this clash between the two figures, um, and we, which means, um, you know, f fortunately for us, less civilians dying. But that does not mean, sadly, that the number of civilians dying is, is not a concern in the state, as, as it were. So if you look at it, um, there's something that got my attention. So you said that not so much of successes, but it's just been there. And uh, you look at one thing in, in Abuja, there are rising cases of kidnappings and abductions. What could have given rise to this case of abductions that we've seen in the country? So um, in our report, we look at the drivers of insecurity. One of the major drivers since the Tinubu administration came to power has been the socio-economic condition in the country. I mean, it's not a new thing. Everybody is aware that uh, the fuel subsidy was removed, um, the floating of the Naira. So socio-economic conditions have become a real driver of insecurity within the country. Now, what that meant in Abuja is more people using um, commercial vehicles to move, move around. And so we've seen criminals taking advantage of that where they offer themselves to you know, commute people um, as, as taxis. And then sadly, the phenomenon locally called one chance has now become more prevalent. Now, in addition to that is the activities of what we've categorized as non-state armed groups that continue to attack, especially outlying areas in Abuja. So places like Kujé, 
uh, places like Buari, uh, you see those type of incidents occurring. So it's a combination of this, both this attack by non steam act actors in outlying areas, as well as the one chance that has resulted in the increase in abduction in, in the federal capital territory. It still comes to a big question on policing. Um, and local police, because there are those who will tell you that uh, there are taxes that, that take them from their workplaces in Meitama, Wuse area, and uh, families will say the sins not heard, and work, I mean, co workers will say the sins not heard from such person since they left office, and this increasingly. In fact, we have heard cases in part of North Central region of the country where those who they call the spiritualists will now uh, obtain a but, private but part of the human. These uh, have become a phenomenon also in the last two months or so. Exactly. Um, so these are the, the kind of things you are seeing. It's a combination of both the ability of authorities to enforce certain policies and then law enforcement um, as well. In the case of um, the transportation, for transportation system, there are several components of it. First off, registration of those ve vehicles and then the use of um, parks as well as if, if, for instance, like what we saw in River State, where hill um, um, app companies that you know supply transportation services, their uh, drivers are being targeted and, and being killed. So it's a combination of several elements. In first, the, the ability of the state to enforce um, policy, uh, you know, measures, and then secondly, law enforcement components. Um, the case of the lady that was killed in Maitama uh, Hospital is, is an example of that. Uh, she was. Uh, t she, it, it was a case of one chance. She was dropped in the hospital and then she eventually died. Now there were enough evidence to have traced who did that thing. She, until today, we've not had that a, a, mm. an investigation, a forensic investigation, has led to the arrest of the perpetrators of that act. Is there even a forensic lab in Abuja? Um, to my knowledge, yes. I, I know there was one uh, in Lagos, although it was affected by in the, in the NSAT saga, uh, but I understand that he's being rebuilt. Uh, but I don't know if the police or the security agencies uh, have access uh, to a forensic uh, analysis lab here in Abuja that can give them uh, on, almost uh, an immediate uh, report or analysis of, of, of the situation. Um, to my knowledge, yes, it has. Whether it is effective or not, sadly, is what I can't answer. You know, those are questions that the, the operators can answer. But the capacity of the state to investigate things like that, I think we, we have that capacity. Mm. What is lacking, perhaps, is the will to ensure it does. But the second part of it is also intelligence. Um, it is intelligence that would unravel all of this. I mean, this, these things are not done by ghosts. They are done by pe individuals that are living within the FCT. Or even if they are not living with the FCT, they do come into the FCT to carry out those acts and then to leave. Mm -hmm. Now there is a, uh, an arm of government whose responsibility it is to keep eye and keep tabs of development like that. And so for it to have reached this stage without um, answers to those that are behind it, to what they are doing with the example of the body parts you gave, because I mean, once those body parts are harvested, they are taken somewhere. And it's very easy to identify that. And it's a, it related to economy. Exactly. Because um, we the, understand, I don't know. There's a financial we, exactly angle to it. And like, like we say, follow the money, and you definitely get who mm. is behind it. So point is, like, like I started saying, there is a law enforcement component, and there is an intelligence component. And all of this lies um, with the presidency. Um, understanding these points, raising tasking orders, and giving timelines on conclusions of those tasking orders, I think would help bring this to an end. Minister of FCT, Union some weekend announced a few days ago that it is uh, shutting right. down illegal parks. In and I think so much of these parks stops and every at some point. And I do think that there, there also needs to be a better public transportation within the city and and even lighting. Um, and then I mean Abuja has much more problem that the minister need to have to fix. Um, I, I think he set up a committee. If I were going to advise him, that committee should conduct an audit, a security audit, to identify the security gaps within the city. A couple of years ago, a project was um, issued uh, and commenced, actually, for the installation of CCTV cameras within the city. What happened to that? that well, we've seen some new ones. That, uh, and do, do, interestingly, those, were, those, those new ones that have Chinese inscriptions on them. They're, they're for traffic light. So that's very different, different from, uh, uh, from the CCTV cameras that we, ha we have in mind. Those CCTV cameras will, have, will give ability for forensic investigations like the type that we talked about mm. earlier on. But first off, conduct an audit 
identify the security gaps within the city. Some of these gaps would include these um, parks, illegal parks that we're discussing. And then, you know, I hate to say it, but even corruption within the officials. Mm -hmm. Last week I had to deal with a very an annoying case. There are um, persons who are operating under the guise of the consuls. And they are they're actually running an illegal, I don't know, government as it were. They, well, they, they, they stop people, they yeah. tax them, mm -hmm. you know, and they are, they are so brazen ab about it. Now, um, these are the type of things that that kind of um, audit will identify, and then he goes... Uh, uh, I, I think the deputy minister has his work cut out for him, and in fact, uh, the series of manhole accidents across Abuja because those manholes, beside, and there are a whole, whole lot of those manholes across Abuja city, They've stolen all the coverings of all those man who's causing a lot of uh, health uh, accidents uh, for, for citizens in Abuja. But I'm worried about Ogun State, though. Ogun State has not really been on the, the radar or, I mean, uh, within the analysis of insecurity, but there is a rise. In the all of the Southwest, Ogun State has about 49 fatality figure. What could have, I mean, what, what caused this? And um, gangs. Uh, so there was a cult um, gang violence between two major ga gang gangs that resulted in the death of um, several people within the month of September. And that's what we're seeing. It's very possible that the activities of those gangs are, is related to some form of political activities because that's what we saw from the beginning of the year when the political season started in, in full. And that's what we're also seeing into the month of, of September. But um, principally, the activities of these non-state armed groups Specifically, Gangs is responsible for the rise in fatality figures in Ogun State. So, if, if you do, uh, if you look at the, the breakdown by region in terms of abductions now, Southwest has uh, about 219 fatalities, uh, abductions 65, South South has 56 abductions, 149, in Q3, 149 fatalities, Southeast has 42. Uh, abductions, 128 fatalities. Northwest has 577 abductions, 362 fatalities. Northeast has 122 abductions, 491 fatalities. And North Central, 180 uh, abductions and 366 uh, fatalities. So we see that in all that not east still has more fatalities more i mean it's it, it's maintained as uh, on the negative as number one in the country in terms of the number of uh, deaths and uh, fatalities that we have seen in terms of uh, abductions the northwest is still leading the pack in terms on the negative though on the number of people that have been abducted we thought that this will have reduced we've seen situation in niger in zamfara and in some part of uh, Kaduna State, although we heard and seen that the governor in Kaduna State is sitting with traditional rulers and uh, religious uh, leaders in Kaduna State to say, how do we resolve these issues? Why is the Northwest region still a hotbed of abductions? For simple reason, the presence of non-state armed, armed groups uh, who, whose ability to operate has not been hindered. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, there are ongoing military operations, but those military operations unfortunately have not been able to limit the ability of these non-state armed groups to operate, to move from one location to the other. Uh, what we have seen in the last um, Q3 is most of the governors trying to create state-level state security apparatus. So in the case of Kaduna State, like you mentioned, he's recruited some young, young persons. In the case of Kasena, I think just last, um, of course, in the last few weeks, they've launched a vigilante group and they've even armed them. In the case of Zamfara, they are also thinking about the same thing. They've attempted to stop illegal mining. In the case of Sokoto, the same thing. So that type of um, development, um, state-level security apparatus that are supporting the federal-level operations, I think is the way to go. It's too early. Uh, if they sustain that effort, especially if they are able to form some form of network where they're able to cooperate among themselves, it will help in reducing that. But at the moment, that, that, that mm -hmm. ability... Uh, or the capacity of the state to prevent these non-state armed groups from moving around, from attacking rural areas, and then from carrying out their ac activities. So it's not easy to abduct up to 100 persons. They not only abduct more than that 100, they keep them for long, long periods. Mm. Where do they keep them? In so-called ungoverned spaces. spaces. Uh, the good news is that in the renewed hope agenda, 
uh, the, the Tenuba administration has mentioned that they would dominate these ungoverned spaces. So we're looking ahead and we're hopeful that that would, that, that would be done. Of course, it's still early, early days. Um, the government has just set up. Uh, we hope that what they promise in that yeah. document is what they are going to do. You did say earlier that you wouldn't say that the Tenuba government has been successful in terms of security. It's, it's too early in the sense that what we are seeing is a plateauing. Um, you can interpret a plateau to be success, but for, his, for success to achieve is when you are coming down that, that plateau. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, what we've, re, re, what we've seen consistently is a figure of around 500 deaths every month. We want to see that brought down to, a hundred, to about 100, and that's what we're hopeful. If we have seen over 6,000 people dead already in Nigeria from January to September, uh, and uh, if we don't drop that figure, uh, we still have about, uh, the, uh, we're, to we're talking months. about October, November, and the seven cases. If that, the, the, the rate still maintains, that's 1,500. We could be looking at about 8,000 people dead before the end of the year. God forbid, we hope that those figures will drastically reduce and, in fact, to the BRC minimum, all no deaths at all. That will be our joy. But what gives you the most worry in all of these reports for this quarter that you released? Um, the activities of non-state armed groups, that ability that they still have to challenge the supremacy of the use of force by the state. That, that keeps me extremely worried. The second thing is the absence of co cooperation, collaboration, and coordination within the security forces. There has been a presidential directive for that collaboration. We're not seeing that yet, sadly. If, there, if the president should do something, he declared war on the state of emergency on food insecurity in this country. Uh, what about security? If he needs to stamp his authority, uh, it seems to have more strength and gravity in terms of the economy uh, and politics. But if he has to do something that will cut the attention of the world and Nigerians and keep peace in Nigeria or restore peace in Nigeria, tonight, what would you say he should be doing? Uh, manage security like a project. Introduce metrics where uh, hopefully in the next few days, weeks, he's going to sign a performance bond with the security sector and in fact all the ministers. Now, manage security like a project. What that means is that introduce yeah. M&E measures, um, introduce metrics, so that within a period, say one month, he's able to review and see through metrics the whether, analytical. whether there are successes or not. Mm -hmm. we, uh, figures like this will tell you if there are successes or not. So we, uh, ensure that ever, all the 29 ministries, MDA, uh, ministries, departments and agencies in government introduce metrics so that the president in, their, in his engagement with right. them can measure their their, their, their performances. Dr. Kabir Adam, thank you so much indeed. When I saw the pictures of the NSA office, I've not visited physically. I wish I could go there and take a tour and see what they have in store, if I'm allowed. It, it reminds me of the CIA headquarters in Langley. And uh, I imagine that is as uh, fortified in terms of uh, equipment and capacity to track uh, a security situation in the country remotely. Uh, but I, I, I wish that I... there is an intelligence fusion <laughs> center there, and I'm hoping that the NSA will hear you and invite you soon. <laughs> you have an ability to see what that fusion center does. Yes, I, I want to be, I want to be surprised, <laughs> and I wish that we have the capacity to be able to do that. Nigeria is such a great country, don't you think? And exactly. enormous potential that we have in this country. We just need exactly. leadership and focus to be able to get things right. And I wish the country the best. Thank you so much, Kabir Adam. Thank such you a so pleasure much having you. Oh, Thank you so much. Same here. Thank you, my friend.